The Liturgical Year of Dom Prosper Garanger. May 31st, St. Angela de Merici, Virgin. This last day of May, which is honored by the virginal triumph of Aurelia Petronilla in the first age of the church, is also fragrant with the lilies that wreathe the brow of Angela de Merici. The 16th century, which a few days back offered to our risen Lord the seraphic Magdalene de Passi, now presents him with this second fruit of heroic sanctity. Angela realized the whole meaning of her beautiful name. In a mortal body, she possessed the purity of the blessed spirits and imitated their celestial energy by the vigorous practice of every virtue. This heroine of grace trampled beneath her feet everything that could impede her heavenly march. Gifted at an early age with the highest contemplation, she bravely traveled to Palestine, there to venerate the footsteps of her divine spouse, Jesus. After this, she visited the New Jerusalem, Rome, and offered up her fervent prayers at the confession of St. Peter. She then entered into her rest and founded a religious order, which is and will be to the end of time, one of the glories and aids of the Holy Church. The thought of the great St. Ursula and her virginal legion made a deep impression on Angela's soul, and she too would form to our Lord an army of valiant women. Ursula confronted the barbarian host. Angela would give battle to the world and to its seductions, which are so dangerous to young girls. God blessed her with victory. As a trophy of her combats, she can point to the countless generations of young people whom her order has saved during the last three centuries by giving them a solid Christian education. The liturgy thus speaks of the virtues and actions of St. Angela. Angela de Merici was born of virtuous parents at Decanzano, a town in the Diocese of Verona, near Lake Benago, in the Venetian territory. From her earliest years, she kept the strictest guard over the lily of her virginity, which she had resolved should never be taken from her. She had a thorough contempt of those outward deckings on which so many women set their hearts. She purposely disfigured the beauty of her features and hair that she might find no favor save with the spouse of our souls. Whilst yet in the bloom of youth, she lost her parents whereupon she sought to retire into a desert that she might lead a life of penance. But being prevented by an uncle, she fulfilled at home which she was not permitted to do in a wilderness. She frequently wore a hair shirt and took the discipline. She never ate flesh meat, except in case of sickness. She never tasted wine, except on the feasts of our Lord's nativity and resurrection, and at times would pass whole days without taking any food. She spent much time in prayer and exceedingly little in sleep, and that little on the ground. The devil having once appeared to her in the form of an angel of light, she at once detected his craft and put him to flight. At length, having resigned her right to the fortune left her by her parents, she embraced the rule of the Third Order of St. Francis, received the habit, and united evangelical poverty to the merit of virginity. She showed her neighbor every kind office in her power and gave to the poor a portion of her own food, which she procured by begging. She gladly served the sick. She gained the reputation of great sanctity in several places, which she visited either that she might comfort the afflicted or obtain pardon for criminals or reconcile them that were at variance or reclaim sinners from the sink of crime. She had a singular hunger for the bread of angels, which she frequently received, and such was the vehemence of her love of God that she was often in a state of ecstasy. She visited the holy places of Palestine with extraordinary devotion. During her pilgrimage, she lost her sight on landing on the Isle of Candia, but recovered it when leaving. She also miraculously escaped shipwreck and falling into the hands of barbarians. She went to Rome during the pontificate of Pope Clement VII in order to venerate the firm rock of the church and to gain the great jubilee indulgence. The Pope had an interview with her, at once discovered her sanctity, and spoke of her to others in terms 
of highest praise, nor would he have allowed her to leave the city had he not been convinced that heaven called her elsewhere. Having returned to Brescia, she took a house near the church of St. Afra. There, by God's command, which was made known to her by a voice from heaven and by a vision, she instituted a new society of virgins under a special discipline and holy rules which she herself drew up. She put her institute under the title and patronage of St. Ursula, the brave leader of the armies of virgins. She also foretold shortly before her death that this institute would last to the end of the world. At length, being close upon 70 years of age, laden with merit, she took her flight to heaven in the year 1540 on the 6th of the calends of February, January 27th. Her corpse was kept 30 days before being put in the grave and preserved the flexibility and appearance of a living body. It was laid in the church of St. Afra amidst the many other relics wherewith that church is enriched. Many miracles were wrought at her tomb. The rumor of these miracles spread not only through Brescia and Descanzano, but also in other places. The name of Blessed was soon given to Angela, and her image used to be placed on the altars. St. Charles Borromeo affirmed while preaching at Brescia a few years after Angela's death that she was worthy of canonization. Clement XIII ratified and confirmed the devotion thus paid her by the faithful, which had already received the appropriation of several bishops and the encouragement of several indults of sovereign pontiffs. Finally, after several new miracles had been juridically proved, Pius VII enrolled Angela in the list of holy virgins in the solemn canonization celebrated in the Vatican Basilica on the 24th of May in the year 1807. Thou didst fight the battles of our Lord, O Angela, and thy holy labors merited for thee a glorious rest in the mansions of eternal bliss. An insatiable zeal for the honor of Jesus, whom thou hast chosen as thy spouse, and an ardent charity for the creatures redeemed by his precious blood. These were the characteristics of thy holy life. This love of thy neighbor made thee the mother of a countless progeny. For who can number the young children that have been educated in sound doctrine and piety by thy daughters? Thou dost powerfully contribute to the welfare of Christian society by thus preparing so many for the duties of domestic life. And how many other congregations in imitation of thy Ursulines have taken up the same admirable work and have brought consolation to the church and happiness to the world. The sovereign pontiff has ordered that thy feast should be kept throughout the whole church. He declared in issuing this decree that he wished to put under thy maternal protection the young girls who are nowadays exposed to such fearful dangers by the enemies of Christ and his church. They have formed the project of undermining the faith of women that so their good influence may be destroyed in their families. Disconcert these impious plans, O Angela, protect thy sex, nourish within it the sentiment of the dignity of Christian woman, and society may still be saved. We address ourselves to thee, O spouse of Christ, that thou wouldest aid us to fervor in the liturgical year, wherein we are made to follow in the path that was so dear to thee. Thy devotion in following the divine mysteries which are successfully brought before us, led thee to visit the Holy Land. Thou didst long to see Nazareth and Bethlehem, to traverse Galilee and Judea, to give thanks in the cenacle, to weep on Calvary, and to adore the glorious sepulchre. Deign to bless our feeble desires and efforts to tread in these same holy paths. We have still to follow thee to Mount Olivet, whence our Redeemer ascended into heaven. We have to return to the cenacle which the Holy Ghost is preparing to light up with his divine fire. Obtain for us, O Angela, that we may follow thee to these hallowed spots, which made thee quit thy country and undertake a long and perilous pilgrimage. O prepare our hearts for the sublime mysteries which are to crown our paschal season. <laughs>